Hi there. Welcome to Barclay Castle. Thank you. Nice Home of your ancestors. You. Yes. Wow. It's lovely, isn't it? It's beautiful. Most of what you're seeing here was built by your 18 times great-grandfather, Thomas de Barclay. Oh, built by him. A lot of this was built by him. Wow, okay. This is the Barclay Arch, which we will go through. Okay, looks a little scary. <laughs> I've been told that my 18 times great grandfather, Thomas Lord Barclay, had sent a note to the king saying that his father had passed away. And I would love to know more about that. Well, we have some documents here, which I think will uh, reveal what happened. This is a 700 year old oh. financial account. Is this original? Uh, this is original, wow. it's, uh, it's on parchment. This is in Latin, of course, which was the usual written language of the time. This is a list of the expenses in the castle. And it's this bit here that is particularly interesting. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a translation of that. For the Lord's expenses in Barclay Castle mm -hmm. for 22 weeks from the day after All Saints mm -hmm. until the 5th of April, which was Palm Sunday this year, on which day the father of the king came at dinner time. That's correct. I'm confused. Why isn't the father of the king the king if he's still alive? It's very odd indeed, isn't it? In a hereditary monarchy, right. because the father should be the king. Shall we just look at one other yes, please. Um, manuscript, which will just give us an idea. This is from 1327. And this is the bit that is particularly revealing and again, we have a translation here. For bolts, rods, bars, and other ironwork bought for the chamber of the father of the king. Mm. So the father of the king was living in a in, chamber. In a chamber with Is that lots. Like prison? With lots. Ah. <laughs> he was indeed being kept prisoner here. He was being kept prisoner by his son? No. He was actually being kept prisoner by your 18 times great grandfather. He was the man who was paying for all these locks and bolts and bars to be put on the chamber of the kings. Okay, let's just back up a second. Mm -hmm. My 18 times great-grandfather, yes. Thomas Lord Barclay, mm -hmm. is holding the king's father prisoner. Yes. Well, this is getting juicy. <laughs> okay, okay, tell me more. Why is my 18 times great-grandfather holding the king's father prisoner? Because the king's father, who was King Edward, had been King Edward II of England, was a remarkably bad king. This is Edward II. And he, just a few months before this, had been forced to abdicate from the throne. After ascending the throne in 1307, Edward II married Isabella of France. For over a decade, they reigned in harmony, but the queen grew to detest her husband for his many failures on the battlefield and his lack of leadership. He often inflamed tensions among the nobles by picking favorites. Many nobles united over their hatred of one favorite in particular, Hugh Dispenser the Younger. Dispenser used his influence over the king to gain land and wealth. He was ruthless, he was brutal, and he was a financial wizard as well. He was very good at managing the king's money. Mm. So that is why Edward II liked Hugh Dispenser. Isabel was said by one chronicler to have loathed Hugh Dispenser with a more than perfect hatred. Uh, she really hated That's him. That's a nice one. <laughs> with a more than perfect yes. hatred. Wow. Hostility towards King Edward II and Hugh Dispenser eventually led to war in 1321. Queen Isabella took up arms against her husband and joined forces with Roger Mortimer, a nobleman with whom she allegedly had an affair. Then, in 1327, the pair overthrew the king. And so, Roger Mortimer seized power for himself during the next few years. Um, so Mortimer, I feel like that was in my family tree somewhere. You're absolutely right. Here you have your family tree. And look at the top, Thomas Lord Barclay. So this is my 18 times great-grandfather. That is your 18 times great-grandfather. Was he married to Margaret Mortimer? Yes, and Margaret Mortimer was the daughter of Roger Lord Mortimer. Okay. 
All right. <laughs> wow. So my 18 times great-grandfather, Thomas de Barclay, married Margaret Mortimer, which makes her my 18 times great-grandmother. And this marriage between Thomas and Margaret makes Roger Mortimer, the guy who was allegedly the queen's lover, my 19 times great-grandfather. So Roger Mortimer told his son-in-law, Thomas de Barclay, I trust you, and mm -hmm. will you keep this man, Edward II, in your castle in Barclay? Yes. How come Roger Mortimer had the opportunity to rule the country if he wasn't a royal? Well, nominally the king was Edward III, but he was still a boy. He was only 14. Oh. So you have Isabel, in effect, ruling the country until he comes of age. Mortimer has great influence over her, and there is an element of military coup about this. Okay, did Hugh Dispenser ever try to get um, Edward II out? Hugh Dispenser himself did not try to get Edward II out because if you look carefully at this drawing, what you have here is Mortimer and Isabel at the front. During the revolution, Hugh Dispenser was executed. This is Hugh Dispenser the Younger being put to a very, very unpleasant death. So, it looks like it had to do with this private part. Well, it did, and several other parts. Are you serious? It looks like there's fire involved. Very well, they, they chuck the bits in the fire once they cut them off or cut them out. So what you have is your 18 times great-grandfather is holding the king prisoner, and your 19 times great-grandfather is in effect ruling the country. I mean, it's kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. Powerful little family we got there. We have your ancestors. Mm-hmm. <laughs>